the ROG Phone 2 with his optical sensor. What? And Tutu scored 400,000? That must be like within the top 10. What? It's the number one phone. The fastest. The fastest. An Asus phone is the fastest. How? The fastest in the world. <laughs> Now this is quite undoubtedly the fastest phone in the world but before we do anything else we've got to address the elephant in the room and it's the size of this damn thing. This is bigger than my Note 10 Plus and by a considerable margin. It is a lot longer than that phone although the same in width pretty much a lot thicker and a lot heavier. And this Note 10 Plus is damn well big enough as it is. So this is really pushing the boundaries. I hope it has a lot to offer. And to be honest, who am I kidding? Spoiler alert, it has a damn hell of a lot to offer. And we're gonna be breaking down all these things it has to offer. Is it worth buying? I mean, if you live in Europe, good luck to you. You're probably not gonna find it. If you're in America, they've just released it. And obviously if you're in China, you've got the Tencent edition, which what this is because I've had to import mine for the purposes of this review and to try one for myself. So moving forward, every phone's gonna be going through the trial by triage, where we're gonna be basically judging a smartphone on these following characteristics. We're gonna have display and design right at the top, battery life to one side, and the camera quality to another. In the middle, it's all gonna be about what runs the phone, what powers the phone, the features and gimmicks it has to make it special, and how it stands above the competition, if at all. This is unapologetically big, but it's fit for purpose, and you can forgive it because it really delivers in many key aspects where it really matters. So let's start off with the specs, because this is this phone's headline features. And for first, it has the Snapdragon 855 Plus. It's using BIN chiplets. BIN, no, not that kind of BIN, but a binning process where basically processors are selected depending on how well they perform. And the better performing ones have been installed in this phone across a median of Snapdragon 855 chips. It does give it somewhat of an overclock, which isn't the most meaningful thing in this regard. The most important thing is the Qualcomm Adreno 640 GPU has received a massive 15% boost. And this helps towards this phone going to being a cut above the competition. It has up to 12 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. This one has eight gig because it's the China version, but to be fair, eight gigs more than enough. Up to one terabyte of UFO, UFO? UFS 3.0 storage. So 128 gig in this China version, 512 gig in the normal models that's gonna be coming to the USA and Europe. And then they're gonna have an ultimate edition, which is gonna be overpriced, not worth it. It's a sad thing this phone doesn't take a micro SD card. 128 gig is probably enough for most people. And if it's not, 512 gig should be more than enough. And if it's still not, I suggest you look into some cloud storage options rather than paying the ridiculous price they're gonna charge for the one terabyte version. Moving on, the display, it has a 6.59 inch 1080p panel. Now on a screen this size, 6.59 inch 18 by five aspect ratio, 1080p is more than adequate, more than crisp, more than sharp enough for 99% of us. I mean, 1440p comes in into its own when you're zooming into things, but other than that, for day-to-day -day use, for viewing your apps, how it looks, it's still more than crispy and more than enough for the human eye. It is a 10-bit HDR AMOLED panel with Corning Gorilla Glass 6. One thing that does disappoint a little bit, this has Wi-Fi 5, and to be the top of dog, I mean, I wish it just had Wi-Fi 6. I mean, I'm able to get over 150 megabytes a second on my Note 10 Plus. On this, on the same connection, it's somewhere around 60 megabytes. Not slow, but not mind-blowing either. What is mind-blowing, however, is just by adding maybe two millimeters, they're able to squeeze in a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. That is absolutely insane and we'll be going over battery life as this review and video progresses. It has dual USB type C ports, one at the bottom, one to the side with an accessory port. It has a headphone jack. It has dual rear facing cameras, a normal perspective and an ultra wide, a 48 megapixel normal perspective camera with about 80 degree field of view made by Sony and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. The front selfie camera is 24 megapixels. And I'll say it right off the bat, spoiler alert again, this is not a phone you're gonna buy because of its camera performance. It's just meh. 
mediocre, maybe even Note 8 was even better than this, but the rest of the features more than make up for what it is. So before we get into the meat of the review, make sure you subscribe if you continue watching this video and hit that like button. If you don't like something, if you like something, talk to me in the comments below and and now let's get into it. The display itself is 120 hertz. I mean, that's like enthusiast PC gaming monitor type of thing. But what's more impressive, it has a 240 hertz polling rate. Definitely, definitely something that's gonna be very hard to depict and show you. But I've basically done this recording at 120 frames on my GH5, and I'm gonna show you hopefully what, what the difference is between 60 hertz and 120 hertz and hopefully you'll get an idea of what all the hype is about you see it's hard to show you the true depiction because this video is going to be played back at 24 frames per second but nevertheless you'll be able to see a difference in smoothness responsiveness and how much more buttery higher frames make the user experience really feel so this display is plenty bright enough i believe it's 500 nits if I'm wrong, I'll edit it up here and add a little thing. But the only thing is, at night time, it is really annoying. It doesn't get dark enough. So what you've really got to do is just make sure you enable dark mode everything. Dark mode YouTube, dark mode phone, dark mode Google Chrome, dark mode whatever you can. Now, let's move things on to the battery life. Now, at this stage, I'm going to show you how the usage patterns on this phone has been over the course of not one, but the last two days. This is the first time I've ever, ever tested a phone that has actually truly lost a two full days. At the end of two days, it's on 19% and the time is 23.10 at the time of recording. Now, this is not something I've seen before. I've had high-end phones for as long as I can remember. And just as a comparison, what I've been using today is my Note 10 Plus. And as you can see, it's on 16%, not after end of two days, but really only at the end of one day. How this 2000 mAh extra roughly than my Note 10 Plus manages to get this phone through so much more time being used, it's really a mystery. You see, the screen has been on longer on this phone, but the phone function hasn't been used as much. I've been on the phone for maybe 20 minutes in total today. Whereas on the ROG phone do over the space of two days, it was two hours. Now from the battery, which is damn amazing, let's look at these cameras. Now you get a plethora of modes, night mode. I'm just gonna show you a little test. And in this lit scenario, it's not gonna be the greatest of difference. But nevertheless, they have incorporated a night mode. It does a better job than it would do on its own. But in this test setting, you can't really see much of a difference. Doesn't mean to say it's not helpful, but from other tests I've done, it's pretty pointless, pants, and I wouldn't use it. Moving on to the selfie camera, which is 24 megapixels, I found this to have some noticeable lag. Now you can't really pick it up on this video, but in relation to my head moving and the image on the screen, there is some noticeable lag, and it very, very badly lacks dynamic range. This is definitely not a phone that you would get for this bloody camera quality. I've got some samples coming up here to show you and the front camera only records in full HD. Now, if you look at these images, you can see the trees at the bottom right really struggle to be shown clearly. And even in this sort of portrait mode, the bokeh is pretty pants. This is the two time zoom. Moving on to the ultra wide camera. They all look pretty dull. I mean, I am used to Samsung colors and maybe that's why I've been spoiled. Now this is full HD at 30 FPS. It doesn't seem to be that bad in this sort of scenario. It's not struggling. But as soon as we bump it up to 60 FPS, which you're gonna see now, man, it really dulls down. You do get that little bit of a slow motion effect, but it looks rubbish. This is the front facing selfie camera. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's not very wide. It's at full arm's reach. It gets hit by the sun a lot. Look at this. What the hell is this? I don't know about the audio quality, but we'll find out in post. And let me take a second to pause and tell you, it sounds rubbish. There's no other crazy modes out here. It only does full HD at 30 FPS or 60 FPS. No 4K in the front selfie camera. Even though it claims to be 24 megapixels, it, I do believe it struggles with dynamic range a lot. So 
This isn't going to be a devout Instagram self-lover, vlogger, selfie queen person's phone. The dual front firing speakers on this phone are some of the best phones that I've ever heard on a smartphone. It even has an outdoor mode which essentially cuts the bass and ups it completely by like another 3 or 4 decibels. My Note 10 Plus, I thought that had better speakers. It had such better speakers than my previous Note 8. But let look at this comparison here. Please wear headphones just so you can tell the difference. This is a high quality recording with the mic right in between both the phones as we play this. So you can hear the difference for yourself. Now, this is the built-in Armoury Crate. All your games come up here, a bit like a game launcher, and you're able to fine-tune settings for every single game, as well as put different profiles and have individual profiles for each game. So some games can run on max power, some games can run a bit more tame and conserve battery life. Really depends. You get a glance at all your system specs, and you can enable X mode from here or from the quick menu toggles from the slide down menu on all Android phones. Now you do get these triggers on the left and right, you see these little textures and they have their own rumble feature. In game you can pull in this game center, turn off your notifications as you suit, loads of different customized shades settings, you can see stats. Now you're able to assign the air triggers to a certain portion of the screen as you see fit. So on every game you can enable it, place it where you want it, so the left one I have on the aim and the right one I have on the fire button. This really frees up your ability to keep your fingers away from the screen other than just movement and aim. And this would probably be a great feature. One of the things that I'm really happy about is that they've kept the headphone jack. And be it as it may, if they didn't keep the headphone jack, this really wouldn't be that appealing to gamers because I'm sure gamers really want to choose their own headsets if they're serious about playing with other people online. I mean, nowadays phones are powerful enough to basically do voice chat whilst you're playing a game. And this phone, if it didn't have a headphone jack, how would you use a mic? How would you listen? I mean, it all gets a bit more complicated. So the fact that they've kept the headphone jack and they're not following this stupid fashion, stupid fashion, and they're not following this stupid fashion of omitting the jack for no reason, thumbs up for that. So should you get this phone? I mean, I've just shown you, it blows away, it blows you away with the battery life, it blows you away with the performance, the camera is mediocre, the speakers are damn awesome, the user interface is awesome because of that light skin built in, the gaming features are awesome if you're a gamer. There's nothing to really dislike about this phone apart from these few takeaways. It doesn't have wireless charging and it doesn't have any sort of waterproofing. So if those things are important to you, chances are this may be a deal breaker. But if they're not and you're happy to baby this phone in the rain, then this might be the perfect phone for you. For me, I prefer the boxy Note 10 Plus. Just something about it, maybe because I'm a fanboy, I don't know. But I feel like it's more of a polished product in other regards other than just gaming. So that is it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have a ROG Phone 2 versus Note 10 Plus coming out very soon. Make sure you hit subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Perfect. Perfect.